Hi, I'm Fred, and this is uh, Almost Seven Honest Minecraft. It's not. This is Vlogmas 2020. I'm going to say the fourth. I'm pretty sure that's what day it is. We haven't started that much. Um, before we get started with our beer, I do have a correction from the cheese episode. Uh, my friend Cheese did point out that what he said about the pumpkin spice cheddar was, it's not that bad. He doesn't remember saying it was good. So there you go. He's a cheese guy, so I trust him. Mostly, I wouldn't have eaten that cheese. Certainly not paid money for it. <laughs> Today's beer is the Boulevard Dark Truth Imperial Stout. I think Boulevard is one of those uh, Coloradas. Pretty sure. I'm not sure what they mean, whoops, by Imperial Stout. Oh, yeah, I, am I? Am I getting my Imperials and my Quads confused again? Probably. This one did not tell me to uh, pour like a mad bit. What did that one say? <laughs> pour hard. Uh, that's what you expect from a stout. I can almost see through it with the light. Almost. This is a strong one. This is not a beginner beer. Actually, maybe it is. It's a little bit bitter. Maybe coffee drinkers like this. You want to try? My wife made a face when I offered. I don't know. She likes coffee. Today's topic is sleeping. My sleep rules. Which, through years and years of research and sleeping, I've kind of developed. I have bedtimes, uh, more than one. I have first, second, third, fourth, I think is the last possibility. I also have zeroth, in case I'm really tired and have to go to bed early. Now, if you've watched any videos about sleeping on YouTube, there's, most of this information's out there. <coughs> Pardon, that was a, that was a thick one. Um, but I kind of put it together just for myself, and here's what I do to try to wake up feeling refreshed in the morning. Now, I cheat because, now I always thought I was a morning bird, morning, what is it called? Uh, uh, an early bird and a night owl, both. There's been some small research that has actually added four more sleep types, as it were, and I don't remember the exact terminology, but it was something silly like a daytime sleepy person. So basically, early in the morning, I wake up, and I'm ready to go. Early mid-afternoon, I kind of want to take a nap, and then by the time, you know, work is done, the afternoon rolls around, I pop back up, and I'm good to go again. Uh, sometimes, on the weekends especially, in that little time, I might take a nap if I didn't get a lot of sleep, but for the most part, that's just how it goes. So the way to figure out your bedtimes, and I suggest you actually figure out your bedtimes and try to stick to one or all of them, um, is you figure out what your... Um, sleep needs are, let's see, I'm still looking at my notes. So sleep cycles are typically about 90 minutes long. This is for adults, certainly, definitely not for small children, and teenagers possibly, but they need like way more sleep cycles than adults, um, which is why the way our school is set up is a little wrong for their sleep and therefore their health and their grumpiness, and therefore our health, and it's just a vicious cycle. One that we probably won't be able to break for a while. But anyway, uh, to figure out um, your actual cycle length, uh, go by 90 minutes. I didn't figure this out. Um, there are just ways of doing it. Uh, get tired, take a nap. <laughs> Wake yourself up after 90 minutes. If you feel like really refreshed, even if you didn't sleep that long, then you're pretty much right at the 90. Go back and forth. To, you could do a lot of research, how much if you want. If you don't care about figuring that out, just go with 90. It'll work. Um, the, so we got our 90 minute sleep cycle and we got, uh, we know when we need to wake up typically. Now I work, you know, quote unquote nine to five job. So I know exactly when I want to wake up every morning. So what I do is I count back from that time in 90 minute increments, giving myself seven and a half hours of sleep. That's a target. It's five sleep cycles. I can handle four, no problem. Occasionally, even you know, being kind of older, I can handle 
I'm like, less than that, I can handle one. I don't like to, and it's not smart, but I can. So four to six is usually what you want to target. Uh, some people do need more sleep, so they want to go for nine hours. Um, some people just don't need as much, so they'll just want to go for the six hours. I target seven and a half. And so since my wake time is 6.30, I can count back and my bedtime is 11. But that's not exactly my bedtime. That's my falling asleep time. In general, and this goes back a lot longer than the sleep cycle thing, at least from what I've heard, um, it takes you about 20 minutes to fall asleep. So judge that. So therefore, if I want to sleep at 11, I want to get to bed closer to 20 till. So now we're back to 10.40. And I like to give myself time to actually get ready for bed, brush my teeth, you know, get dressed for bed because I'm wearing my day clothes. Ten minutes. So 10.30, I try to wander back there, get ready for bed, hit the hay, fall asleep, wake up from my alarm at 6.30, and feel pretty good. And that really does work, and it's worked for years for me. Like I said, if I miss that 11 o'clock, if I need to push it out to 12.30, I do. At 12, I go back there, start getting ready for bed. If I'm super tired, if I've been up late, I haven't got a lot of sleep, if I'm sick, I'll dial it back to what I call the zeroth bedtime, the 9.30 slot. Same thing, at 9 o'clock, I start getting ready for bed. And that's just, what the, what the whole point of this is, is that if you wake up at the end of a sleep cycle, that's where your brain is ready to go, and so you'll feel more refreshed, even with less sleep. I'm a sample size of one person, but it's worked for me for literally years. It's not always possible, and your mileage will vary. You know, I don't know if I'm normal or abnormal when it comes to sleep. I just know it works for me. My advice is just try these things out and find out what, for your, what works for yourself. Now, when it comes to naps, which I mentioned earlier, there are certain rules involved too. What you don't want to do is take a nap that's half your sleep cycle. If you have an average 90-minute, 45-minute nap, you're going to wake up dead to the world. It will take you an hour to recover from that. You may not feel like you've had a hangover or you're sick, but some people do. And I know if I wake up like that, it's just like dragon butt. That's how it works. So an ideal time is either a full sleep cycle, 90 minutes, or what I typically do is 20 minutes. And that's enough of a cat nap to actually kind of get that energy going. And so that way I don't destroy my sleep and I can make it to my bedtime, um, but still make it to my evening or afternoon, whatever I need to work on, whatever I need to do. Uh, let's see. Oh, the only other tip I have, this goes back to preparing, in this case, preparing for the day. Uh, mint will tend to wake you up. So in the morning, if you are feeling groggy, and it happens, sometimes I miss my sleep cycle, I just got to go to bed when I go to bed, and I'll get up and uh, the act of brushing my teeth does help kickstart the day. Once again, your mileage may vary. And if you don't like mint, I'd just sleep better, I guess. I don't know. Try harder. There's plenty of reasons why you may not be able to sleep as much as you need or as much as you want. Um, those could be health issues. Those could be societal pressures. They could be whatever. You could be like me and hate sleep. I don't like to sleep. That's one of the reasons I kind of had to come up with a system so I could sleep because it just quantifies it for me so it makes it easier for me to do it without having to think about it. Uh, one thing that doesn't help with sleep, alcohol. Let me Gulp some, and I'll tell you why. Ooh, still strong. Oh, super strong. Okay, I'm back now. Um, while alcohol will tend to make you sleepy in the short term, once it wears off two or three hours after you fall asleep, your body is instantly energized, and if you don't wake up, if you don't actually wake up, you will immediately start tossing and turning and have poor sleep for the next who knows how long. So the whole idea of a nightcap, not a great idea, unless you have a nightcap and you need to get up in one or two sleep cycles. But then you can't be so drunk that you can't do whatever you need to do after that, so it becomes a thing. So if you want to do your daily drinking, and apparently some of you do, I still can't figure that one out. That's what this whole uh, vlog was about this time. Um, do it earlier. You can do it later, just stay up later. But you kind of want to have the alcohol out of your system before you go to sleep, or else it won't work that well. I think that's about it. That's plenty of sleep talk. I know I'm getting sleepy. I've still got an hour till my zero with bedtime, though. <laughs> um, I was going to tell you something specific. I don't remember. Something about this channel? I don't know. 
Go watch some more videos. Something. I really don't know. All my channels talked about. The links are in the description. Um, let's see. What's our... Uh, I need to start writing down some some uh, daily cheers. Ah, here's a one that makes you sound like a grizzled old ad exec. Here's mud in your eye. <laughs>